is literally been a dream of mine to have a car lift. We have just taken delivery of the new car lift. Here's a twin bush car lift. I'll put the model number in the description below. But it's just been delivered. Unfortunately, the Moffat that took the package off couldn't quite fit in the garage here to plonk it down. So we're going to have to unbox it from outside and bring it in. I'm going to use my engine crane to help me do that. I am going to be watching the instruction video because even unboxing it, it comes apart in a certain way. So I want to bring it in, but yeah, I want to take it apart in the right order and place everything down on the floor, ready to go into position. Just gonna measure how long this is so I know how much room I need in the garage. Yeah, 4.2 meters long. up one end with some wood and a block and that allowed me to get my engine crane underneath to lift that. That was the heaviest section and I've just got it on some axle stands now and for now I'm just going to place the other one on top of it so I take my crane off and go and retrieve that one. I just got my dad actually to give me a hand so it doesn't swing around too much but obviously the engine crane's taking most of the weight. So just that last one to come in and that's about done. It's taken about two hours to unpack it and bring it in the garage but that's pretty much on my own. So the garage is completely full now, with all these bits on that side anyway, but this is where it's going to go and there is a big Ford Zephyr in the way. So first job is let's pull this Ford Zephyr out to give us some space. Now I think it's out of diesel, I tried to start it the other day, pretty sure, so just going to grab my van and drag it back. The other half of the garage is now completely full with all the parts for the car lift. I have got instruction videos, so I will be referring to that quite a lot. Brought my laptop down with a YouTube video they've got. I think it starts with the four posts, which are just here, led down on the ground. So, but there is one special post which has this bracket on, which I believe takes the controls. So that needs to come in this corner here. Okay, I got the four uprights led down on the floor and the first cross member ready to basically slide into the uprights. You can tell sort of roughly how wide this ramp's going to be now. It's literally taken up half of the garage across, but I don't think the posts are going to get in the way that much. It's going to give me so much more space when the Ceph is up in the air. Anyway, you've got to get these around the right way. I've been following the instructions. Obviously, there's some wires at this end of the cross member and that needs to be near the control panel side. So here, yeah, I don't want to put that the wrong way around. So let's slide those in next. Okay, you've got these cross beams in. Anyway, the next thing is we've got to try and poke these safety bar things down the sides. And then there's some end caps to go on there and those bolt to the end caps. Anyway, that's the next job, let's get that done. This lift I'm trying to obviously put together my own. I've had a bit of help with a couple of pieces, but um, this is the way I'm getting around stuff. So. To stop this moving around, just put a piece of wood in, and these are quite tight, these stops, they have to slide through the nylon bit there. So I'm just sliding that down. There's two slots there it goes into. And then it's quite tough, so just got a little rubber mallet. And so on the instruction video, it said uh, to knock it in two to three holes, but also on the instruction video, they then had to drop it down. So I'm just gonna put it in for two holes for now um, and then see how far that gets us. That's two holes. So I just need to do that four times all the way around. Right, just got to fit these top plates now and basically this hole here is 
going to lock the safety plate in position. So that goes there. And then eventually this other hole will take the cable which comes from around that pulley so that will go to there. But um, I'm just going to fit this safety bar and we got like a nut bolt and washers to go on four of those on each one pretty straightforward just going to go around repeat that on all four posts okay so i've got this first platform in place basically the instructions tell you to have like four or five trestles and you set these both up on the trestles i don't have those so I lifted them together onto the dollies, uh, just got them off the ground high enough for my engine crane to go underneath. And then I lifted this back one up and spun it over actually inside the strap there. So that's lifted into place. I just need to put bolts at either end just to secure it properly. Then I'll come back to this one. And this one has got all the cables underneath. So I need to get underneath cut all the cable ties off, release the cables. Um, but we'll come to that in a minute. But for now, I'm quite pleased. Now it's time to connect up these big cables. So I've just taken off the cover for this sort of break bit. And apparently, to pull them through a bit more, but A bit tough because I'm basically pulling out the hydraulic pump thing. So anyway, they go, that goes down there, and then I've got to take that up to the top. Actually, I took quite a lot of pulling, so the hydraulic uh, arm, if you like, is at its full extent to get these cables out long enough. So uh, I'll show you underneath in a second, but if we go up, that then, into there. So we've just got to go around all four posts, pull the cables up, stick it on. So that is under the platform and there's all four cables, one to each post and that's what it pulls to lift the lift. So we now have the safety mechanism all in place, there's these rods here and basically they link all four posts, there's a big bar that runs all the way down and these the other two rods so you have a lever here and I haven't tried it yet because the lift I guess will just fall down but that pull that lever and it releases the safety from all four posts. So that's good. Now all the heavy work's done, all those bits are fitted. According to the instructions, the control box is next to go on. It screws up to here. That's this thing here. So I'm going to unpack that. So I'll fit this stop switch, which I guess when the lift gets to its maximum height, that just stops it going any further. That was a bit of a pain because you've got to get two screws on the back of there, fixed to the post. And where my post is quite tight to my I-beam there, it's difficult to get a screwdriver, but I just basically shoved the whole lift over a little bit to get my screwdriver in there. That cable comes through on this side 
and drops down. There's the cable there, and that drops down into there to be connected up. Um, next to do was to fit the motor unit, and that's just pretty easy. Just four bolts there. And next I need to connect the hydraulics. There's a hydraulic pipe that connects from the motor there up to the hydraulic ram which sort of sits under there. So just going to connect that pipe up now. Okay, I've got all the electrics done. So there was one from the switch above. There was this wire which went up into the control box and this main power wire to the motor. I'm not going to even give you any advice on how the electrics go. Watch instructions uh, for that if you're doing one of these yourself. Uh, but next we can fill it up with some hydraulic oil. So this is going to come off. Uh, valve is shut there. And this is where the oil goes. Got my little funnel here and yeah, 10 litres. So, two of these bad boys, they're going to go in there. Let's get filling up. Next, we have these foot rails, I think they're called foot guards, two on each side, and they just bolt to the side of the platform. There's still a couple of electric cables to connections to plug together, but Following instructions, it says now we can actually turn on the lift and test it. So just plugged it in. I had to put an English plug on because this is obviously a German thing. Uh, switch on this emergency stop. It's on. And there's a slack uh, cable bypassing. So I've got to press these two buttons together. But anyway, obviously it's got to fill up with hydraulic fluid first. But hopefully then it's going to pull the cables tight. So let's just give this a go. Green lights on. Let's push these two buttons together. You can see already the uh, hydraulic fluids emptying from the reservoir there. Hopefully, you can see the cables in a minute. Hopefully, they're going to pull. Two. All right, the hydraulic fluid, half of it's out of the reservoir now. So. Hey. There you go. And there's all the cables nice and tight now. Oh wow, that's pretty good. I'm just going to go around and have a quick look and make sure all the cables are in the right place on the runners and everything. Now I'm going to try and put the lift all the way to the ground. And apparently you're supposed to loosen this so any air can come out. You probably see that was really juddery on the way down, but now the air is really starting to come out of the system and it's going down a bit smoother this last little bit. See that? Loads of air coming out. And there we go. It's completely down. Now I just got to check check the level of the platforms, and basically you can just adjust that with the cable ends, literally pulling in the the bolts, uh, and yeah, it just needs to go up a little bit that way. So I'm just going to get up there and just adjust those bolts. So I did have to do quite a bit of adjustment on this safety bar link setting up because what I found is if you adjusted it too tight the bars wouldn't release properly so they wouldn't catch properly or if you didn't do it tight enough with the bars then when you pull the lever basically it wouldn't 
pull out the catches enough so just to be warned the instruction video makes it sound very simple but there is a bit of setting up to do with the safety bar linkage so anyway got it there about in the end I think and as the lift goes up you can hear them sort of snap into those safety bar holes each time as it goes up the car lift is pretty much installed now that has taken me a good couple of days work I've had a hand just to lift a couple of bits but I've pretty much done that all on my own haven't exactly followed the instructions with the stuff to put the platforms on but it is doable it is doable on your own pretty much if you, you do need an engine crane to lift stuff up or some form of lifting this around because it is heavy i've not tested it i've literally just wheeled the ford zephyr onto the ramp this is my first test so let's give this a go and uh, see if we can get it up in the air Okay, I've scooted the Zephyr just forward a few inches. Let's see if it goes all the way up now. Check that bumper. So the safety stop at the start just needs to adjust it slightly because it's not allowing the car to go into the top hole of the safety bar so I'm just going to adjust that slightly with an Allen key. That's it, all finished, it's all good as gold now, the catches are all adjusted, that is at maximum height. Now I think the information I had says it goes to 1.9 meters high, actually to the bottom of here is about 1.77 so I can't quite get my transporter van under there but obviously we can fit a scooter or two under here now or possibly another car, future projects. Gives us a lot more space in the garage as a whole. We can wheel stuff under here out of the way to work on stuff on this side. Makes the whole garage space much more flexible and usable. And of course, the other beauty of a car lift is we can get to stuff underneath the car much more easily. There is also a cross member with the lift, which allows you to put something like a bottle jack so you can jack up one corner of the car etc so you can work on the brakes that kind of thing i hope this has been of interest to some people you may have found it useful if you're thinking about getting a car lift yourself uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button find us on facebook and instagram and we'll see you next time cheers bye